Good evening, everyone. So I wanted to welcome everyone to the second annual Hillman Canada Awards reception. It's wonderful to see so many people here tonight. And introduce myself, I'm Alex Dagg, and I am a <laughs> long time, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I am a longtime uh, board member at the Hillman Foundation, uh, going back to my work with the uh, Workers United and Unite, and I now work with the National Hockey League Players Association, but I'm happy to continue to uh, MC this uh, evening's celebrations. And I know the people in this room are from many interesting walks of life. We have uh, quite a few of my colleagues here from the National Ho Hockey League Players Association, we have journalists here, we have many trade unionists, we have professionals, and uh, we have many other uh, notable people here tonight. So I wanted to welcome everyone again to this evening's uh, celebration. And we're very, very pleased uh, on behalf of the Hillman Foundation to have had so many great entrants to this year's award. And I think you'll see when you meet the winner how deserving they are of the award tonight. So I'm going to now introduce Barry Fowley, who's the Director of Workers United in Canada, who's going to uh, give a welcome. Thanks, Barry. Good evening, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and friends. Welcome to the second annual Canadian Hillman Prize Award. I am Barry Fowley. I am the Director of Workers United Canada. We're a union that represents uh, Thousands of garment workers, retail, social service workers, manufacturing, food service, hotel, and restaurant workers right across Canada. Uh, some of our members are here tonight. Um, I'd like to maybe just uh, single out one of them in particular because he's going to be retiring from the union at the end of this year. Uh, and uh, yeah, everybody turns around. Um, so uh, Jimmy Dean, wherever he's hiding, raise your hand. Okay. He, he looks pretty good for a guy who's just three days past St. Patrick's Day. Um, but the, uh, the thing about Jimmy is Jimmy shares something with um, Sidney Hillman. Um, Sidney uh, started one of his jobs as an apprentice cutter. And Jimmy's been a cutter at Copley Apparel for how many years? 45 years. So that's cutting suits, probably cutting some of the suits in this room here. Um, and so that's Jimmy. Uh, he's the, uh, why I single him out as well, is he's the president of the uh, Canada Council. And uh, there's, there's several other people within the labor movement who are here tonight. Um, and we welcome you. Um, we're thrilled to be part of this process, the Hillman Foundation, um, to honor the excellence in Canadian journalism. Um, Sidney Hillman was the president of the Amalgamated Clothing Workers of America. Uh, it is a predecessor of our union, uh, and we are proud to be heirs uh, of Sidney Hillman. Um, Sidney was quite an interesting individual. Um, he participated and created a number of different uh, labor, um, uh, labor bodies. The, uh, Committee for the Industrial Organization was one of the labor federations that he uh, created or participated in created. He had a hand in the American Labor Relations Act. Uh, he had a hand in creating the Amalgamated Bank of America, which continues to exist today as the sole labor bank. Uh, the bank was used to uh, help fund um, loans from workers who did not have a lot of money. Um, so he had a very social activist background uh, as a visionary leader within the organization. Um, to commemorate uh, his death, the, um, the foundation was created. and The foundation has been carrying on some incredible work in the United States for a number of years, and now it's come across the border uh, to Canada, and we're celebrating the second, uh, the second award, which is being given tonight. I don't know, am I allowed to say who's, who's got the award yet? Maybe not? Well, okay, so I'll leave the big surprise because I don't want to be accused of blowing it. Um, but let's just say it's a group of people who work for um, the CBC. Um, so there's, there's kind of a hint there. Um, and um, 
we're proud of the CBC and we're proud of the work that these people did. Um, the kind of journalism they do is the kind of journalism which asks questions. Um, it tells the stories of people um, whose stories need to be told and respected. Um, so enough for me right now. So from Workers United, um, I thank you very much for coming tonight and I hope you enjoy yourselves. All right, and now I have the uh, opportunity of uh, introducing Bruce Rayner, who's the president of the Hillman Foundation, who's going to say a few, th uh, saying a few things as well. But I've known Bruce for many years, and he is a tremendous union organizer. And without his passion and enthusiasm, the Hillman Foundation Awards would not be where they are today. And it was his support as well that helped to bring them in Canada. So I want to give a big uh, welcome to Bruce Rayner, the president of the foundation. Thank you, Alex. And it's a pleasure to be here for the second Canadian Hillman Award. A couple of things about Sidney Hillman. Like Jimmy, uh, Sidney Hillman was a cutter. But I don't, the, the word was Jimmy, he wasn't a very good cutter. I would never say that about you. <laughs> but he was an, a Jewish immigrant from Russia who organized a union amongst immigrant workers in the United States and Canada, workers that people believed could not be organized. They spoke different languages. Many of them were not citizens. Uh, they worked in shops where the bosses had tremendous power over them. They were considered unorganizable. And yet, Sidney Hillman and his colleagues organized a garment workers union. And not only organized a union that changed the lives of these workers, but organized a union that changed the political life in our countries. And the result of Sidney Hillman's work, much of the New Deal legislation that resulted in the United States in creating a legal right to organize for workers, the Wagner Act, um, the Hillman work created the political arm of the labor movement. Unions in the United States did not participate fully in politics till Sidney Hillman created the PAC, which was the political arm of the labor movement. And it, it, it increased the power of workers in American society and I believe in Canadian society. And when Hillman uh, became Roosevelt's closest advisor, there was a famous uh, uh, um, quote that actually the Republicans used to attack Franklin Roosevelt. They said, clear it with Sidney, which was the idea that any major decision the Democratic Party would have to be cleared by Sidney Hillman from the Congress of Industrial Organization. But what it meant was labor had grown up and had real power in American society. And that was in the name of Sidney Hillman. And so when Hillman died in 1946, right at the end of World War II, there's a six column headline in the New York Times. Now, there's labor leaders in this room and I don't wish any of them to die anytime soon, but there are none of us that are gonna yield six column headlines in the New York Times. Sidney Hillman was a giant of American society. And what the Clothing Workers Union, now Workers United, uh, did was created the Sidney Hillman Foundation, and not just to honor his name, but to honor the, among the things that he believed in most forcefully was that we needed a free press, a, a vibrant press, a press that could speak truth to power, could uncover uh, the, the truth in society that the powerful interests wanted suppressed, and we created the Sidney Hillman Foundation. When I finish, you're going to see a brief video which is going to show you over 60 years of Hillman Award winners, from the journalists that uncovered and talked about the civil rights movement in America, to health and safety on the job, to um, people that we're going to honor tonight. Uh, not only did the Hillman Awards, we have, we've had them for many years in New York, and on May 1st, May Day, we will have the 2012 awards. You're all invited to join us in New York for that event. But last year, we began the first Canadian Hillman Awards. We're very proud of them. This is the second, and we've got an incredible winner tonight. The other thing that Hillman Awards do, and like Barry, I'm not going to mention the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, and, uh, but we've got an incredible winner tonight. We also give out a monthly award called the Sydney Award. And there's been some amazing uh, winners of the Sydney Award who uncovered uh, and talked about the abuse by Amazon in its warehouses, uh, or the abuse in the prison system in the United States of the use of solitary confinement, which is uh, a cruel and unusual punishment of prisoners that was exposed. 
And then the closing of a Stelladoro factory in the Bronx, which I've passed for most of my life, which was a vibrant union uh, stronghold, which was closed and the jobs moved to a uh, lower cost uh, area in Ohio, a non-union factory, reminiscent of the horrible events of Caterpillar recently announcing the closing of the London, Ontario factory uh, and moving the jobs to a low-wage, non-union workplace. So the, Sydney's um, honor journalists that uncover those on a monthly basis. And we are proud of the Sydney Hillman Foundation. We're proud of the fact that it continues to, re to recognize progressive journalism, to remind us that if we don't have a vibrant investigative arm of journalism as corporations win more and more control over the media, we will not have a democratic society. You can't have democracy without strong journalism. And we're proud of the fact that the foundation um, recognizes that journalism. We're proud of the fact that tonight we are all here gathered here to honor some amazing journalists who've done some work that not only we want to congratulate them for, we want to encourage them to do more of it, to speak truth to power. So you will see a little bit of the history of the Hillman Awards, which looks back, but tonight is very much a part of that video, which is honoring tremendous journalism. Thank you very much. I think it's a very impressive list of winners in the U.S., and uh, I think we're going to add our Canadian winners to this list as well. And, and uh, before I do that, I'm going to introduce the the Canadian judges who are responsible for going through all the amazing entrants we had this year and making the difficult decision as to who was going to win this year's award. Now, one of our judges was not able to be here. That's Laszlo Barna. He's a Gemini award-winning executive producer of television and film, and he's produced celebrated shows such as Da Vinci's Inquest, Blue Murder, and The Don Cherry Story. Uh, among others. He is unable to be here tonight, but he's played an active role as a judge um, for these awards. And we also have, who are going to be presenting the award, Jim Stanford, who's one of Canada's best known economists. He works for the Canadian Auto Workers Union, and he's a regular commentator and columnist in the Globe and Mail. And many of you, I'm sure, have read his very inspiring articles in the Globe and Mail. And also we have Bronwyn Dra uh, Draney, a Canadian journalist and editor of the Literary Review of Canada, who's also uh, a columnist and book reviewer for the Globe and Mail. And I want to introduce and have Bronwyn and Jim come up to give the award this year. Hello, everyone. Well, according to my notes, I'm not supposed to give the award. Bronwyn's going to give the award, but I am supposed to say a few words about the, the process and the initiative and uh, mostly uh, the gratitude that uh, I feel as a judge, and I know that uh, Bronwyn and Laszlo share, to the Hillman Foundation and uh, the local organizers for uh, exporting this little bit of revolutionary journalism up here uh, to Canada. It's a marvelous tradition uh, from America that you've seen and uh, obviously everything uh, that was said in the video uh, is true uh, in Canada in terms of the importance of investigative journalism. Uh, independent reporters with the resources, the freedom and the wherewithal uh, to basically cut through the bullshit, if I can use that technical term, and uh, get to the root uh, of the story. And this is the second year that all three of us served on the panel, actually. We were um, also invited to be judges in the inaugural year last year. And I guess it's catching on because we sure had a hell of a lot more submissions this year, which means a lot more work for the judges. Uh, but that, of course, is a, is a positive thing. And as long as the organizers ply us with uh, food and drink tonight, then we'll be, uh, we'll be duly uh, compensated for that work. Uh, we had a tremendous range of submissions this year, actually, and uh, I know that we had uh, a very tough time, uh, the three of us, uh, trying to narrow it down. We had submissions on all kinds of issues confronting Canada, confronting Canadians, including mental illness, uh, Aboriginal uh, people and the plight uh, that they're experiencing, women in the prison system, a whole bunch of uh, environmental issues, including um, environmental uh, uh, fallout from the tar sands, a very interesting submission on palliative care, uh, homelessness, and, and a whole range of issues. So all I can say is that uh, it was a very difficult decision, but we were all gratified to see the range and the power and the quality of investigative journalism that is going on in Canada. And I think that all three of us, uh, I'll speak for, for the panel, um, 
were in a way um, reinforced and, and doubly committed to the principles of investigative journalism. You know, uh, obviously, all of you in this room, uh, some of the issues and challenges that we're confronting as a society in Canada. I'm worried about an authoritarian streak that's running through certain uh, aspects of our uh, policy making and, uh, and the impact that that's going to have on discourse, on debate, on the free exchange of ideas. I am worried, frankly, about the federal budget next week and what that's going to mean uh, for the quality of investigative journalism that we're going to be celebrating uh, tonight. And, um, All of us on the panel of judges uh, express a deep gratitude to all of the journalists uh, who made submissions and a deep gratitude to the Hillman Foundation for uh, continuing to reward and recognize this essential aspect uh, of our democracy. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Bronwyn to actually announce the winners of the, this year's award. Thank you very much. Okay, well. I think this is the worst kept secret in the room, but uh, we'll say drum roll, blah, 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 and the winner of the 2012 Canadian Hillman Prize is Scouts Honor, the, fi the Fifth Estate Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. So congratulations. <laughs> so this is very powerful and very disturbing stuff. Um, we, uh, the jury, decided to award this prize to Scouts Honor uh, and the Fifth Estate in recognition of the extraordinary difficulty of telling this story because of the pain of the victims and the secrecy of the institutions involved, and also in recognition of the hard work that went into piecing the story together. Here, I'm going to just give you one example from the CBC's dossier about the kind of detail they had to go into to make this work. Because Scouts Canada would not give the CBC the numbers of abusers or victims in their confidential files, even though they admitted they had confidential files, the Fifth Estate, here I'm just reading from the dossier, the Fifth Estate did something we've never done before. We built a database of every courthouse in Canada, there are hundreds, and began contacting each and every one of them, both criminal and civil, and begging court clerks to help us search their archives. Some were helpful, some weren't, some searches were very expensive, some were free. Anyway, it's that level of detail which is absolutely extraordinary in this work. The results from that huge fishing expedition that they went on, they found about 80 cases where active or past scout leaders had abused children and they felt confident in publicizing a figure of about 300 Canadian children victimized since the 1950s. But the impact of the broadcast, once it had been aired, uh, has been to reveal much, much more than that. Uh, Scouts Canada agreed to say, for the first time, what the real numbers were. And there were 350 abuses, not 80, abusers, with an average of about 10 victims each. So 3,500 as opposed to 300. So you can see the impact that this work has had already and is continuing to have. There's just one other thing I'd like to say, though. Um, while I'm delighted that we have awarded uh, the Hillman Prize to Scouts Honor, I think it's important to note that the CBC's treatment of this subject has not been without controversy. I mean, the best investigative journalism does tend to raise controversy and a lot of discussion about the subjects under, under investigation. I've spoken in recent weeks with two men who have seen the documentary and are very troubled by it. One of them was a beaver leader for many years in Spouts, Scouts Canada, and the other one was a victim of sexual abuse when he was a boy, not in Scouts, but at a private school. The beaver leaders, problem 
was he felt that the whole documentary cast suspicion on all leaders who volunteer in the community. And he talked about how when he was a beaver leader himself, people were always sort of saying, well, why are you doing it? Why are you, you know, you're not getting paid anything for this. What, what sh you know, they were suspicious. And unfortunately, that is sort of the climate within which we live now. And when these exposés come, the innocent can sometimes get sideswiped with the guilty. The abused victim had a different point of view. He was troubled by the Fifth Estate contacting victims and coaxing them to tell their stories before the camera after keeping secret for so many, many years uh, because, as he said, it would, quote, make good television. Well, it does make good television. It makes great television. It makes the most honest kind of television you can possibly imagine. But it's very, very upsetting as well. And I just think those things need to be recognized when you do this kind of work. From my point of view, though, the really important work that the Fifth Estate uh, has done is to solidify what I think we've been noting uneasily in this country ever since Mount Cashel and the hockey abuse scandals, Graham James getting sentenced again today. The bigger the institution, the more valued its reputation, the better a hiding place it is for these perverts because they know that the institution, whether it's hockey or scouts or the Catholic Church, is going to opt for secrecy and the preservation of their good name over justice and the protection of vulnerable children. Maybe not all the time, but a great deal of the time. And that's why work like Scouts Honor deserves the Hillman Prize. Thank you.